Hello and welcome to CG Visuals, my name is Zach and in this tutorial we're going to be learning how to create this fire effect inside of After Effects using Trap Code Particular. So the first thing we'll do is create a new comp size solid with a new instance of Trap Code Particular and open the designer. From the emitter section we're going to make this an OBJ model, choose the sphere smooth, we'll reduce the container size to 80, make sure it's a volume and we'll increase the particles to 5000 just for the time being. We'll set this to an inwards emitter with a velocity of 5000, velocity from motion is 800. We'll enable the fluids and we'll start putting in our custom settings here. We're increasing the force region size, increasing the buoyancy to 75 and we're adding some swirl scale and turbulence and we're also going to increase the viscosity and fidelity of the fluids as well. And we can get a preview of how that looks. We can also temporarily enable the uh, relative density field as well. We're going to reduce the lifespan to 0.8, add a little bit of randomness. And then we're going to add some more complexity to this with displacements using a, a size, opacity and displacement. We have the fade in time there of 0.6 and we're going to put minus 750 for the flow speed. We're also going to increase the particle count a little bit as well so we can get some more detail. So now we're going to go and increase the size and start plotting down these custom size over life graphs. We're going to do the same with the opacity, reduce that to 60 with some randomness. And also create a custom uh, curve here that allows it to fade in and fade out the way we want it to. We're going to use the over life color ramp. And we're simply making this into like a pale yellow orange to a darker red color. You can experiment with those. We're going to enable shadowlets to get some more detail there with the custom settings that you can see on screen. And we're going to name this first system fire. And then we're going to create a second system. This is going to be our embers that will also uh, play with the fluids as well. So we're going to do a similar thing a uh, 3D model, we're going to choose the smooth sphere again, same container size of 80. This time though we're going to use a bi-directional emitter for the motion, same velocity of 5000 and velocity from motion of 800 for both system 1 and 2. We're going to disable the fluid block so that it's using the fluids from the master system, which is fire. Now these two fluid simulations are interacting with each other. So our embers will last a little bit longer, but they'll have a greater random lifespan of 1 and 75. And we're going to set these to additive in the blending mode. We're going to go through these size settings here, make them very small of 2. And you can see we're also adding our own graph here as well. The, for the opacity, we're just using the preset there. And we're doing a similar thing with the color over life. We're just going from a pale orange to a darker orange. And we'll, we can increase the fluid viscosity now that we have two systems. One system's using outward uh, velocity and the other one's using inward and so that's creating some extra turbulence. We're going to enable the shadowlets on system 2 just so that we can disable them so our embers don't have shadows. We're going to enable th the motion effect here that allows us to add the spline am amplitude which is a another layer of turbulence on top of the fluids. And we're keeping those embers very small. And one last thing we're going to do with the fire system is we're going to set that to screen as well, just so we get a little bit more brightness in the core. You'll notice we're keeping the colors very similar to a log logarithmic sort of color scheme, so that when we add our glow, that'll all work out. We're adding a third system here. This is a parent system. It's emitting from the uh, primary system. Particles per second are 50. Emission probability is 5. And we're also making it so they only emit... Uh, according to the graph there, as we don't want the smoke to emit straight away. We don't want the smoke to have any velocity, and it's only having a velocity from motion of 200. For the size, uh, lifespan of the particles, we've got 1.5. We're also adding some 
screen over life here, so the smoke only is affected by screen at the beginning. We're making the size very large, 50, randomness of 25, and the smoke will gradually increase in size. And we also want this to be a very faded look, so we're reducing the opacity to 10, randomness to 100 in a fade in, fade out graph that we're creating there. And we're also adding some color over life for this as well, but this time it's just a very dark pale orange to a not black, but very dark gray color. And we're gonna add displacement to the smoke which will override the primary displacement and we're just creating this so we can set that to zero because we're actually going to use the environment settings here first we'll add some wind mainly upwards wind we're using the effect position turbulence uh, we're also going to add the default settings of the meandering system as well just so our smoke has some more interesting movements but it's not using fluid so it's a lot cheaper to render um, we're using air resistance of 1 and we're also reducing the mass of the smoke particles to 5 because it's smoke and we don't want it to have too much momentum. And so we can click apply to all of those settings now. And if we create a null object, this is where we'll decide what the motion will be. We can come down into this window and enable the motion sketch, but the capture speed to 200. And we'll just start drawing with our mouse the sort of pattern that we want the fire to follow. This will make it a lot more interesting. That's over 15 seconds. So we can just alt left click and retime all of that. Preview what this motion will look like. And we can simply copy and paste those particles into the position data of particular. And since they're all using the relative position of the master system, this will all... Now you may notice that the smoke sort of jetting off there. There's an extra setting that's not available in the designer and that's this simulation samples per frame. Once we increase that, our smoke will be much less likely to, you know, freak out with fast motions and just improve the accuracy. As the emitter gets faster, we're also going to increase the particles per second. This is just some keyframes that we're adding here. And uh, for some reason, the fire defaulted to a disk emitter we're changing that back to what we originally intended which was uh, an inward emitter and now we're going to add some effects so we're starting off with a motion tile just so that our, we don't get any funny issues around the edges we're adding a rough in edges with a border of four edge sharpness of 0 0.1 scale of 50 stretch minus one and we're also adding a custom expression which you can pause the video to see what we're adding there we're basically adding animated turbulence that's traveling upwards to simulate heat I'm going to do a similar thing with the turbulent displacement as well this is just going to add yet another fine layer of sort of turbulence to the overall animation so we've got fluids which are then being affected by displacement which is then being affected by a turbulent displacement so it's like three layers of displacement. I'm going to add a simple choker of 0.45 so that our sharpness effect of 250 will work around the edges. If we disable that we'd have some issues and we also want the core of the flames to be slightly translucent as well as fire isn't 100% opaque. Adding a, a custom curves there just to boost the highlights. Adding a vector blur with the default settings. Uh, with the uh, just a very small amount of vector blur and we're also adding our glow threshold 45 radius 300 we we'll also want to enable the motion blur which is when things will start to slow down a little bit we can add our shutter angle and phase and now we can see the before and after our post-processing effects is really what makes this all come together and then when we preview the effect this is the result we have and this is the same we might want to increase the, the particles there as it starts to move quicker. We could actually go even higher with the particles. In this simulation, it's the same setup, but we had a higher number of particles at the end as the emitter moves really quickly. We also adjusted the radius of the glow. And this project was inspired by just one of the many presets that are included in Trap Code Elements version 2. So we started with the torch flame there, but it's not just fire, it has four distinct categories of elements and we'll be covering many other projects inspired by trap code elements so that you can learn how to create these effects yourself so i hope you enjoyed the video stay tuned for next time and thanks for watching